Detective Thomas went camping with his friends. At one point, he went to get some firewood. When he got back, he saw one of his friends, Alice, lying on the ground unconscious. There were three other people in the camp. Julie, Alice's friend, Mary, Alice's sister, and Adam, Alice's boyfriend. Thomas asked all of them to show him their belongings. Look at their stuff and try to figure out who has something to do with the state Alice is in. It's Julie. If you look attentively, you'll notice a picture of Adam among her things. She must have a crush on him. She likely hurt Alice out of jealousy. Eve went on an expedition to Antarctica with a group of scientists. Three days into the expedition, Eve woke up and found out that all of her oh, no. colleagues were missing. The only thing she found was an envelope. Inside, there was a letter. Apparently, a crazy scientist had taken her friends, and now Eve could only save them by cracking his riddles. Here's the first one. How many months have 28 days? The number you'll get is the number of feet you'll need to walk before you start digging. Eve knew the correct answer. All 12 months have 28 days. She walked 12 feet and started digging. The next clue was waiting for her there. It was a bag with a book, a can of paint, a screwdriver, and a note that said that the scientist had locked Eve's friends in his lab in a cave. It didn't take Eve long to find the cave, but there were four entrances leading inside. Passage 1 was guarded by venomous spiders. Passage 2 had a huge and pretty aggressive monkey blocking the entrance. In Passage 3, Eve saw a mammoth. And at the entrance to Passage 4, there was a bottomless well. Uh -oh. Which tunnel should Eve choose? The third one. Mammoths have been extinct for thousands of years, so the animal the girl sees is likely a hologram. Eve entered the lab and saw a dog inside, but it wasn't a regular dog, it was a robot dog. Barking, it ran after Eve. The girl remembered she had a book, a can of paint, and a screwdriver in the bag she had found. What can she use to get rid of the robot? Eve should open the can with paint and throw it at the robot. Since the paint is liquid, it will likely cause the robo-dog to short-circuit. Eve breathed out in relief and started looking around. Suddenly, she saw a key on the floor. The girl picked it up and went to the next room. As soon as she walked in, the door closed behind her back. And a bizarre-sounding voice started to speak. In 15 minutes, toxic gas will fill the room. Your only chance to survive is to take the antidote before the gas is released. At this moment, Eve spotted a small box. She opened it and saw four pills and an instruction. Take four pills, one every 15 minutes. Will Eve have time to take all the pills before the gas fills the room? Yes, absolutely. The first 15 minutes will start after she takes the first pill, so taking four pills will take her 45 minutes. Eve got out of the room and finally found her friends, all tied up. She immediately set them free, but they needed to get out of there as soon as possible. They saw three doors leading outside. Behind the first door, there were hungry polar bears. Behind the second door, the air was so cold it was impossible to survive there. And behind the third door, there was a waist-deep lake with piranhas. Uh -oh. Which way should the friends choose? The third one. The lab is in an ice cave, remember? The water in the lake will be frozen. They will simply walk on the ice and get out of the cave. Freedom! Sam wants to cross the Sahara Desert. This risky journey will take six days. 
But unfortunately, one man can only carry enough food and water for four days. Can you calculate the smallest number of other people that will need to help Sam carry enough food across the desert? Two people. Let's suppose that Sam's brothers, Alex and Bob, agree to help him out. Never mind that Bob always lies. By the end of the first day, they'll have enough food for 9 days. 4 plus 4 plus 1. Now Alex can head back home with a one-day food package. Meanwhile, Sam and Bob can continue their journey with an eight-day package. By the end of the second day, the total food supply will reduce to six food packages. Now Bob can grab enough food for two days and go home. At this point, Sam will still have a four-day food package to fulfill his dream. Sam met a genie in the middle of the desert. The genie said, Hi, I'm Leo. If you solve my riddle, I'm going to fulfill your wishes. But if you fail, you'll serve me till the end of infinity. Deal? Well, Sam agreed. Here's the riddle. It's not alive, but it grows. It doesn't have lungs, but it needs air. It can't be washed, but it's never dirty. What is it? Can you figure it out? The correct answer is fire. First of all, Sam asked the genie for some cash. Nine rare and priceless gold coins appeared in front of the guy. Leo gave Sam balance scales and said, These coins look absolutely identical, but one of them is fake. The fake coin is lighter than the rest. What's the smallest number of weightings you'll need to find the fake coin? The correct answer is 2. First, Sam should divide the coins into three equal piles. Then he should place a pile on each side of the scales, leaving the remaining pile of three coins on the ground. If the scales remain balanced, it means that the six coins on the scale are real and the fake coin is in the third pile. But if the scales do tip, Sam will easily find out which pile contains the fake coin. Spoiler, the pile which is lighter. Either way, he should put six gold coins aside and leave only the lightest pile. Then he can use the same method to find the third coin, by putting one coin on each side of the scales and leaving the third one in his hand. Sam was hungry, so he had one more wish, to have dinner. Leo began frying some fish in a pan that could only fit two fish at once. It takes five minutes to fry one side of a fish. What's the shortest time Leo needs to fry three fish in one pan? Fifteen minutes. Leo should put two fish in the pan and fry them for five minutes. Then he should take one fish out and then turn the other one over. After that, Leo should start frying the third fish. He should fry both fish for five minutes. The first fish will be ready, so he should put it away on a plate while turning the other over. Now, he should put the half-fried fish back in the pan and fry two fish for five more minutes. Voila! All three fish are now ready. Sam left the desert and decided to stay in this little village to get some rest. He wanted to get a haircut and a shave after his long journey. There were only two barber shops in this village. In the first shop, The barber was handsome with a neat haircut. He was well-dressed, and the place looked tidy and clean. Meanwhile, the barber from the second shop was shabbily dressed. His hair was cut in a weird way, and his clothes had stains from last night's dinner. His place didn't look clean at all. Which barber shop should Sam go to, and why? Since there are only two barbers in the village, it's obvious that the tidy barber must have his hair done by the other, and the second barber must have used the services of the first man. Therefore, Sam should choose the barber from the second shop because he's more professional. Two business partners, Rick and Frank, met in a restaurant. It was a hot summer day, so they ordered cold mint tea with ice. Rick gulped down five glasses of this drink during lunch. Meanwhile, Frank managed to drink only one glass. 
Soon after that, Frank fainted and fell to the floor. Doctors diagnosed severe poisoning. But Rick was feeling completely fine. The police found out that both glasses contained poison. How did Rick, who had drunk five glasses of this tea, avoid any consequences? Rick survived because the poison was in the ice cubes. He drank quickly, and the ice had no time to melt in his drink. As for Frank, he drank his tea slowly, and the ice melted in his drink to poison it heavily. You pronounce me as one, but write me as three. You can't read this riddle without me. What am I? The correct answer is I. Bob bought a parrot from a pet shop and put it in a beautiful silver cage. The seller warned Bob that this parrot could give birth every two months, and it can deliver up to five babies at a time. How many parrots will Bob have in a year? Just one, because he only bought one bird, not two. I'm always trapped in my glass cage. I'm usually found at the bottom of the cage. If I climb higher, I get hotter. If I climb down, I get cooler. What am I? The correct answer is a thermometer. A father is locked up in jail. His wife has gone bankrupt. Their son has to sell his hotel in order to gain some money. Yet their daughter doesn't care and is happy. How can someone be so heartless? The family is playing Monopoly, and the daughter is winning the game. Adam is a famous opera singer. He's going to perform for the king and queen for seven days in a row. In return for his work, they should pay him one-seventh of a gold bar per day. Adam doesn't accept prepayments. He requires a daily payment, which is one-seventh of a gold bar. What's the fewest number of cuts they should make to be able to pay Adam each day? Just two. Here's how it works. Day 1. Cut one-seventh of the gold bar and give it to Adam. Day 2. Cut two-sevenths of the gold bar and give this piece to Adam. He'll give you one-seventh of the bar back. Day 3. Give the singer the one-seventh piece you received the previous day. Day 4. Give Adam four-sevenths of the gold bar and he will give you the one-seventh and two-seventh pieces as change. Day 5. Give Adam the one-seventh part of the bar. Day 6. Give him the 2 7th piece and get the 1 7th one as change. And finally, Day 7. Give Adam his final 1 7th piece of the gold bar. Jenny and Sam arrived at a picturesque campground. They had to set up a tent. There were three good spots, in the forest, in the field, and near the lake. Which place should they opt for? The best option is to choose the field. Wild animals live in the forest. As for the lake, look, a zombie is hiding in the bushes over there. Probably not the best neighbor. George was walking down the street. Suddenly, a wizard popped out of nowhere and teleported George to his castle. He offered the guy to choose between these three doors. There's a hungry tiger behind the first door. There's an angry dinosaur behind the second door. And the room behind the third door is filled with toxic gas. Which door should George choose? The second one. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. After 30 weeks, the tree is completely covered with fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree needs to get half covered with oranges?
oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks. Because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. In the ocean, there's an island. On the island, there's a house. In the middle of the house, there's a glass of water. Inside the glass of water, there's a coin. What's in the middle of the ocean? The correct answer is simple, the letter E. Harry went to a party. He liked these four ladies. He wanted to talk to one of them. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the first lady's hand. She's a zombie. The second lady has a vampire bite on her neck. She can turn into a vampire any minute and ruin the date. And the fourth lady is a ghost. So Harry should go and talk to the third lady. Hello. Detective Thomas received a call from Holly. She said, Please come over. I got robbed. It happened so fast. I left my purse in the backseat of the car. When I stopped at the traffic light, someone opened the door and snatched my purse. Detective Thomas hit the road and rushed to the crime scene. But when he saw Holly, he realized that she was a liar right away. How? Holly has a two-door car. How could a thief steal something from the back seat? There are three houses. One of the houses seems very weird. Can you tell which one of them looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They lead to and from houses one and three. So people come and go from those houses. As for the second house, the footprints only lead in one direction, inside. People come in, but they never go out. Take a look at this messy floor. Can you count the number of laptops that you can charge with the help of these extension leads? The cord of extension lead 3 is torn. As for the second lead, one of its outlets is broken. Extension lead 4 has only one outlet, which makes the entire thing pretty useless. And extension lead 6 doesn't have any cable at all. Now let's see what we can do about it. Connect extension lead 1 to the wall outlet. Then connect extension lead 2 to extension lead 1. This way, you can use two outlets from the first extension lead to charge two laptops. One outlet of extension lead 2 can be used to connect the fifth extension lead. And one of them is useless anyway. Now we can use two outlets from extension lead 2 and all four outlets of the fifth extension lead to charge six laptops. So the total number of outlets in use will be eight. Simple. Danny and Diana are spouses. They jog in the park every morning. To match every two steps Danny makes, Diana needs to take three steps. If both of them start with the right foot, how many steps would they make before their left feet are in the front at the same time? They'll never reach that goal. Here's how it'll go. Uba was in a local park and noticed a purse. Someone must have forgotten it. So she took it to Lost and Found. They accepted it and said they would give it back to the owner. At the end of the day, three women came in and demanded the purse back, each stating that the purse belonged to them. Take a look inside the purse and decide to whom it really belongs. Look, there's lipstick in the purse. There's just one woman who's wearing lipstick of the same color, and it's this one. So the purse must belong to her. Let's stick around in Lost and Found for a while. There are more things to give back to their owners, like this wallet, for example. There are three people claiming that it belongs to them, but which one is the real owner? Look, there's an ID card. It has a photo of this guy, so it must be his wallet. There's a backpack, and three people are demanding it. You can take a look inside. Who do you think the backpack belongs to?
there's a jacket that matches this girl's trainers perfectly. It must belong to her. Can you pick the owner of this purse out of these three people? Look, there's a charm on the purse that says Ella. This girl in the middle has a necklace with a pendant saying Ella too. It must be her purse. Yvonne and Liana are exploring a forest right outside their town and find an abandoned hotel. Of course, they walk in to look around. When they walk into one of the rooms, a cage falls and traps them inside. There are three potions. Each of them will only last 10 minutes. If they drink the purple one, they will turn into the first animal they can see. If they drink the blue one, they'll be able to fly. If they drink the orange one, they'll switch bodies with each other. Which potion should they drink? Look, there's a little mouse in the room. If they drink the purple potion, they can turn into a mouse and will be small enough to escape through the cage. What they do afterward is another matter. Inez was studying in a boarding school. She often stayed in the library till late because, well, she didn't want to spend time with her roommates. One day, she found a dungeon. Of course, she walked in to see what was there. She found a pile of old books and a journal filled with weird symbols. Can you help her decode the name of the person this journal belongs to? For each letter, there's a unique border and dot combination. To decode, Inez just has to find the respective letter. If she does it right, she should get the name Marion. A group of friends were partying on a Friday night in a neighborhood. The next morning, Mr. Johnson came to his little shop and found that the glass door was broken. Nothing was stolen, but he reported to the police because he wanted the glass replaced. The police found fingerprints of three people on the bottle. Nova, Ayla, and Eamon. Which of the friends threw the bottle into the glass door? It was Eamon. His fingerprints are upside down and are located on the bottle's neck. This means that he wasn't holding the bottle to drink, but upside down to throw it. A group of cyborgs arrived on Earth to study humans' behavior. The police found out about it and got concerned. They want to track every cyborg and interrogate them. Let's help them find a couple of cyborgs in disguise. Look at these two people here. One of them isn't a human, but which one? It's this guy with a tail. He wasn't careful enough to dress up properly. Here's another pair. They both seem pretty usual, but one of these women is a cyborg. Can you spot her? It must be this one. Her eye color is orange, which is not humanly possible. Look, there are two suspicious people in the grocery store. Oh no, there's just one cyborg. Which one? It's this one, the one with the cyborg's leg. Oops, he forgot to cover it up. Then the police moved on to different houses. One officer took a look at these two houses today. In which house does a cyborg live? Look, there's gasoline on the kitchen counters. It's definitely a cyborg's place of residence. You're doing great. Now, look at these two bathrooms. Can you spot anything suspicious and find the bathroom that doesn't belong to a real human? Look, there's a wrench instead of a toothbrush. I bet that's the one. A young actress, Chanel, was staying at a hotel in Miami. Suddenly, she screamed. Detective Callum was drinking a cocktail right by her balcony, so he walked in and asked her what had happened. The girl looked scared. 
A man dressed in black just broke into my room. I heard some scratches in the keyhole, and then he opened it and grabbed my hand. I screamed, and he ran away. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? The door of the room opens inwards, and it's loaded with boxes now. If someone had opened it and walked in, the boxes would have been pushed out of the way. Bella went to the basement to find her old books. Suddenly, the bulb burned out. Bella took the new bulb to replace it, but the wires are very tangled. Can you find the correct switch that will turn on the bulb? It's the red switch. The best way to get the answer is to start from the bulb. It's been a long day. Bella finally went to sleep. But when she saw oh, her no. bedroom, she yelled and ran away. Can you tell what's wrong here? Did you notice this zombie? Bella ran to the living room and shut the door. Is she safe here? Nope. Take a look at the mirror. Some stranger is inside the room. Bella and Shelly went hiking with their friends. Four of them went into a completely empty lake. And then, eight people came out. How is this possible? Four people were sitting on the shoulders of the other four when they were getting inside the lake. The guys made a stop to have a picnic. They began to play football. During their play, Bella's boyfriend, Rob, busted his lips and ears and broke a couple of ribs and thighs. However, he still managed to play a professional match the very next day. How can this be possible? Rob knocked on his food plate accidentally while playing. He had pig lips, ears, and ribs, along with chicken thighs. When he knocked on his plate, he busted his food. On the way home, the guys went through a field. They saw a cow. It walked 30 feet north, 30 feet east, 30 feet south, and finally walked 30 feet west. All this time, where was its tail pointing? Can you solve this mystery? Downwards, of course. The guys rented four scooters in four different places and hit the road. They agreed to meet in a cafe at the gas station. Here's the map. Can you tell which scooter will reach the destination first? The third one. Bella and Shelly were trying to get the perfect gift for their father's birthday. Finally, they found this beautiful vintage watch, but they couldn't afford it. The seller offered them a deal. Solve my riddle and I'll make a 90% discount. The sisters agreed. The seller took out a $50 bill and asked, what's the easiest way to double my money? Can you help them solve this mystery? they should put the bill in front of a mirror. The sisters decided to have lunch in a cozy little cafe. The cook offered them tomato soup, mushroom salad, chicken wings, octopus, and mushroom pizza. Can you help them choose the safest food? There are mirror shards in these chicken wings, probably not the healthiest option. I'm pretty sure those mushrooms are poisonous, too. This octopus is still alive, and this soup must be several weeks old. So, Bella and Shelly should choose the mushroom pizza. After lunch, 
the local barista offered the sisters free coffee if they managed to solve his tricky riddle. Here's the task. Name a 10-letter word in English that can be typed using only the top rows of your computer keyboard. Can you help the ladies get their free coffee? And the correct answer is typewriter. Great job! Shelly got a job at a restaurant. One night, a cook, a cobbler, and a doctor went to dinner together and asked Shelly to split the bill equally among them. When the bill arrived, it was for four people. How can this be possible? The fourth person was the knight. It was just misspelled as night. Shelly and Bella were walking down the street. Suddenly, they saw this creepy shadow. Can you guess what's going on here? Should they be worried? Nope, it's Halloween. The guy is just walking around and scaring people in his witch costume. See, he's wearing sneakers. Shelly and Bella saw this mysterious magic shop sign and decided to go get some tarot readings. As soon as they entered the shop, a wicked witch <laughs> locked the door and said, I will make your biggest dreams come true if you crack my code. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever. <laughs> then she gave them the following clues. A. 981. One number is perfectly placed. B. 924. Everything is incorrect. C. 093. Two numbers are part of the code, but are in the wrong places. D. 147. One number is part of the code, but is in the wrong place. E. 783. One number is part of the code, but is in the wrong place. Can you help Shelly and Bella? From clues A and B, we learned that 9 is not in the code. It also means that 8 or 1 is in the code for sure. According to clue B, we know that 9, 2, and 4 are not in the code. From clue C, we know that 0 and 3 are in the final code. Clue E tells us that 7 and 8 are not in the final code because we already know that 3 is. And clue D tells us that 1 is also in the code because 4 and 7 are not. So, the correct code is 301. After they answered the riddle correctly, a door appeared in front of them. They got into the next room, which was a library. Three books fell from a bookcase in front of their feet. Then, they heard the butler's voice echoing. You have to open one of these books, but choose wisely, because whatever creature the book mentions, it will appear here. If Gemma and Andy opened the first book, a venomous basilisk would come out. If they opened the second book, a giant piranha monster with razor-sharp teeth would appear in the library. If they opened the third book, a fire-breathing dragon would charge at them. Which book should they choose? Since the giant piranha is a water creature, it can't survive on land, so the guys should choose the second book. The library door opened, and they walked into the next room. It turned out to be a dining room. A large mirror covered one of its walls, yet the reflection of the room in the mirror had some differences from the real room. Can you spot them? The reflection of the deer statue in the mirror has more antlers. In the reflection, you can see someone hiding behind the curtains. But there's no one besides Gemma and Andy in the room. And lastly, in the mirror, one of the plates on the table is different from the others. But in the real dining room, all the plates are the same. Gemma and Andy felt very hungry. Thankfully, the next door that opened led them to the kitchen. There were three different chefs inside. The first chef was a zombie. The second one was a vampire. And the third chef was human. Each of them was holding a pie in their hands. 
but only one pie was safe to eat. Which one? Do you see the bugs coming out of the zombie chef's pie? Yikes! The pie that the human chef is holding is glowing in a weird way. Looks dangerous to me. So, they should choose the vampire chef's pie. Because that's not blood, that's cherry sauce on top. If it was blood, the vampire would have already eaten that. After they answered the riddle, two doors appeared in front of them. One of them had Gemma's name on it, and the other had Andy's. The butler sneaked behind the guys and pushed Gemma through the Gemma door, and Andy through the Andy door. Gemma fell down a pit and found herself in a mysterious garden. She accidentally woke a garden gnome who had been sleeping. He got very angry with her, and still, he agreed to let Gemma go if she answered his question correctly. He showed Gemma three tiny mushroom houses and asked which one was his home. Can you figure it out? Do you see the flower on the gnome's hat? The door handle of the second mushroom house handle is the same flower, so that must be his home. Andy, on the other hand, fell into a magical dungeon. The dungeon guard was an ogre, and he looked very pleased to finally have a prisoner. Yet, he agreed to let Andy go if the guy chose the correct magical portal to escape. Two magical portals appeared in front of him. Each of them led to a room. Andy had to stay inside the room of his choice for five minutes. The first room was full of poisonous gas that would knock him out in four minutes, and the second room was filled with water. If Andy opted for this room, he would have to be chained to the floor with the water rising really fast. In which room can the guy survive? Andy should choose the first room. He should take a breath and try not to breathe for a minute. After that, he'll have to wait for four minutes for the door to open, and then he can escape. Both Gemma and Andy were magically transported to the hallway after having answered their riddles correctly. They were happy to be together again. At the end of the hallway, there was a door. And in front of the door, a witch stood. She placed three long magic wands on the table in front of her and said, You do not need to do anything to one of these wands. One you must break in half, and one needs to be even shorter than that half. The witch added that they could only answer once. And if their answer was wrong, she wouldn't open the door. So, can you tell which wand should be the longest, which one they need to break into half, and which one needs to be the shortest? Do you see those spiders hanging from the ceiling? Since the door is shaped like a spider, they must be giving Gemma and Andy a hint. The silk thread that the first spider is hanging on is the shortest, so the first wand needs to be the shortest. The silk thread that the second spider is hanging on is the longest, which means that the second wand needs to remain as it is. And the silk thread that the third spider is hanging on is of a medium length, which means that the guys need to break the third wand in half. The witch opened the door and Gemma and Andy entered a bedroom. Three spirits were floating inside, each of them claimed to be the owner of the mansion. Gemma knew only one of them was telling the truth. Who is it? The spirit of the elderly lady is telling the truth. Why? Let's rewind a bit. Did you notice the portraits hanging on the walls in the hallway? There's a portrait of this very lady. That can only mean she used to be one of the owners of the mansion. The next stop was a living room. When they walked in, Andy saw something weird. What was it? A face appears and disappears in the fireplace. The guys entered a study next. What's so weird here? The fingers of this medieval knight's armor are tapping on the sword. The next room was a guest bedroom. What's weird here? The crystal ball is showing someone trapped in the basement. Gemma and Andy decided to take a look at the basement in case someone really needed help. Yet, they had to crack another riddle to enter. 
there was a password panel and they needed to type in seven digits to unlock the door. They had no idea what the passcode could be. Luckily, there was a note on the wall and this word was written on it. What does it even mean? Turn the note upside down. What do you see now? The letters look like numbers, right? So the passcode is 187837. There were three people in the basement who claimed to be trapped there, but only one of them was telling the truth. Who is that? Do you see the stitches on the elbows of this lady? She's a creepy rag doll, so she's lying. And this man has claws instead of fingers. He must be a shapeshifter or something. Then it must be this guy who's telling the truth. So Gemma and Andy took him with them. After the guys answered every riddle in every room correctly, the butler appeared again. Thank you, travelers. Now you're free to go. But this, you must know. All of us in this house are cursed. Answer this one last riddle for the curse to be reversed. Once we are finally free, we'll help you with your car too. You'll see. There are nine people in front of you. One of them is a monster who cursed us. Tell us who. This guy has two horns that are hiding in his hair. He is not a human. He's a monster. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.